Hello guys, how are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna solve the problem with internal forces now. I'm gonna draw the problem uh, as I'm describing it. Some people criticize that I draw the problem as I describe it, and then I have some people that say, please do that because then I can do it with you. So uh, I don't know, I'm gonna do it, and that's it. Criticize me if you want to criticize me, that's fine with me. Okay, anyway, you are always, always gonna find a way of criticizing somebody. Okay, uh, the problem is, uh, something that practically is from the book uh, you have a triangular force here and a rectangular force also and another triangular force in this way you have a pin support uh, I mean roller and then you have a pin support on this end uh, you have a concentrated moment applied at this end of 15 kips per foot and you have another concentrated moment in this at this end 15 kips also per foot and the height of this distributed load is 5 kip per foot distances distances are 6 feet 10 feet and 6 feet those are the distances and we have to for this particular problem to calculate the internal forces this is A, this is B, this is C, at point C and at point D. The point D is this point and is located <coughs> one meter from this side. That's basically what it is. So, first thing first. The first thing that we have to do is calculate the reactions and in order to calculate the reactions, well, this is going to be a roller, it's going to be a reaction force pointing perpendicular to the surface of the roller, which is in this way, a y. And this is a pin, and <coughs> we know that a pin we all usually put two forces, vertical and horizontal, my, and the horizontal vx. Uh, and for the sake of calculating a reaction, which is our first step, I'm going to decompose this in triangle, triangle, and rectangle. And the triangular distributed force is going to produce, or it's going to be equivalent to a concentrated force here of 6 times 5 divided by 2. The area, 6 times 5 divided by 2, 15 kip. The rectangular distributed force, and I'm sorry, the location of that force is two thirds from the <coughs> acute angle. This is six. This is going to be two thirds of six, which would be four meters, or one third from the right angle, which is this one. So one third from this angle here is one third of six, which is going to be two. So location, 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 location. That's what the real estate people say. Two feet, and here four feet. The rectangular load is producing or is equivalent to one load applied at the center of similar to the area or equivalent to the area and the area is 10 times 10 times 5 which is 50 kip. Um, and as I said it's located at the center and the center of 10 is 5 feet and this triangle is similar to that triangle so basically it's going to produce a force here of 15 kip which is the area also 5 times 6 divided by 2 and the location is the same I mean 4 from this angle for this uh, acute angle or 2 from the <coughs> right angle. Perfect. Now we can start calculating our reactions. The first thing that I have to do is calculating the reactions in order to do the cuts. If we know that if we have to do a cut at C for calculating the internal forces at C and at D. That's what we have to calculate. I'm sorry, here. C and D. Internal forces at C and D. That's what we have to calculate. So let's calculate the reactions. Summation Summation. I'm going to use another paper for that so I don't mess up with this drawing. 
summation <coughs> of uh, moments at A equals zero. I'm going to consider this is positive. So the first thing that I have is this moment. This moment is 15. Keep per foot, of course. Now I have the force coming, the, the force that we <coughs> converted the triangular force. So 15 times this distance, and this distance is 2. And it's also positive. Now I have the force coming from this rectangular force, which is 50 <coughs> times 5. And the direction, if I if I put the force and I put my pin here, which is what I do for a moment, and I apply this force, it's going to rotate in that way, meaning this way, meaning that it's going to be negative according to this convention. And then I have the force coming from by, which is going to be rotating in that way, meaning positive, positive right hand rule, 10 by. Have this other force coming from this triangle also, which is 15 times, and the distance from here to there is 10 plus 2, 12. Let me put here 10 plus 2. So when you review, you remember apply this force going down like that. It's going to be also negative. And then I have this other moment at the end of 15 also, and that has to be equal to zero. Remember the moment you don't multiply the moment by any force, the moment is already created. So 15. This 15 and this 15 cancel each other out. Let me use my calculator. I'm sorry, my calculator. So it's 15 plus 15 plus a uh, 15 times 2 is 30 minus 250 minus 12 times 15, that's 180. 180 minus 15, that's negative 400. Negative 400. So I have negative 400 uh, plus 10 by equals 0. So by equals 400 divided by 10. I pass the 400 to the other side and divide by 10. So by equals 240. 40 keep. Now I can do summation of forces in y, and then I say, okay, what forces in y do I have? First one, this one, coming from the triangle, negative 15. Then I have ay, plus ay. Listen, when you do this type of problems, uh, I'm going to give you an advice, and I hope this advice is helpful, because even I mess up sometimes and I forget some of the loads. So when whenever you're gonna do a studying loads or moments, you start from left to right or from right to left, whatever, you select an order. And you start uncovering your beam and putting every single one of the loads in the order that they are appearing. Because if you start this load and then you jump to this one and then you go to this one and then you go back here, you're gonna mess up and you're gonna miss some of the loads. So 15, negative 15 plus AY minus this load, 50, plus by. But remember, we just calculated by, and by is 40. So let me put 40 here, by, uh, minus 15 equals 0. And uh, also remember, these are moments. Those, so that's why they are not included in the summation of forces, because we are studying forces, not moments. So this is negative 50, uh, negative 80, negative 80 here plus 40 is negative 40, negative 40 plus ay equals 0, and ay then equals 40 kip. There you go, we calculated the reactions. And you know what we just did also? On, on top of calculating the reactions, we used valuable time. We lost a lot of time. Because you could also only look at the structure and see, oh, let me look at this structure. Triangle 6, rectangle 10, triangle 6. Oh, wait a second, the geometry uh, is symmetric. This moment is 15, the other moment is 15 in the other way, also symmetric. All the forces are pointing down, also symmetric. 
So the only thing that I had to do in order to calculate these, uh, these the, the reactions here, which is what we were doing, is saying, look, if the total load comes from this triangle and this triangle, rectangle and this triangle, you have 15 plus 50 plus 15, that's 80. That's the equivalent of me having something like let's say this is this is homogeneous also let me use this one student gave me this this is so cool uh let's say this is homogeneous let me put it like that as a matter of fact let me put it like that so you can read it also which is good uh, if this is homogeneous and i hold it in, in my hand like that and the total load is 80 i know that i'm gonna have 40 and 40 and that's it so the only thing that I have to do is that. Realize that and I say, oh, 80 is the total load, 40 here and 40 here. And we could have saved time of all of these that we just spend the time. Now, but we already did it and this is a learning experience, so we already learned something. Hopefully you learned something from this. Now, what we're gonna do now is this. At C, that's the first, the first thing that we have to do. Section at C. Well, if it's the section at C, let's do a section at C. That's what we do. Section right there. And I'm going to cut whatever I have there. Section at C. Here. This is what I have. And I have my roller here. And the reaction AY, which is 40. 40 keep. And also, I have this moment here of 15 keep per foot and this is 5 the height of this uh, distributed load 5 keep per foot remember I say per foot per foot yeah but one is multiplication and one is a uh, division and then if I'm using this side of the beam this side of the structure my positive shear is going to be represented like that and my positive moment internal moment at C is going to be represented like that of course I have also a positive axial, but there's nothing here. So most of the problems for the statics uh, is not going to include the actual force unless you have one of these forces inclined and then you will have an actual force or you have a frame and then you will have an actual force. So basically what we're going to do here now is this. We're going to do summation of, we know this is zero by summation of forces in X. We're going to do summation of forces in Y equals zero and then remember that we converted these forces well I already have that force over there which is 15 kip that comes from here and this distance we say that it was 2 and now I have this rectangle this rectangle is going to produce a constant or is going to be converted in an equivalent concentrated force and the value for that force is going to be this distance which is uh, 5 feet multiply by 5, the height, 25 keep, and the distance from here to the load, because I'm going to need it, is half of 5, which is 2.5 each side. Okay, so we were doing summation of forces, right? So then I have 15, negative 15, plus 40, negative 25, minus Vc equals 0. Negative 15, negative 25, 40, 40 minus 40, 0. Vc equals 0 at the center. Oh my god, is that wrong? Did I mess up? No, I didn't mess up. You know, that's the most logical thing to happen there. And when we study shear moment diagrams, you will realize what. But I'm just saying that because that's what, that's going to be your reaction probably. Oh, I mess up there. That should be, that shouldn't be a 0. That should be something else. No, it is 0. Give me a second. My daughter gave me this, Central Perk. Uh, okay, so now we do summation of moments. Let's do summation of moments, so calculate the internal moment. And we're going to do summation of moments at C equals zero. You can do it anywhere, but it's easier for me at least to see it if we do it like that. So let's start from this point. And then I'm going to start from here to here. I put my pin over there, and I start from here. This is 15 in this direction. It's rotating like that positive 15. Now this force of 15 is also making a rotation like that with respect to that point. 
so it's going to be positive 15 is the force and the distance from here to there is 7 5 plus 2 and I'm going to copy it like that 5 plus 2 and then I have this other force of 25 coming from that rectangle ah no I'm sorry uh, you see I was skipping this one so now this force of 40 if I push it here it's going to do like that so that force is going to be negative 40 times the distance from here to here is 5 and now yes now this force comes which is 25 positive times 2.5 and now I have this M which I copy in the positive direction and C and that has to be equal to zero. There you go. Fifteen is this fifteen, fifteen times the distance from here to here, five plus two. Now we have <coughs> the twenty-five forty or again I was gonna miss it, forty this one times five, which is this one negative, twenty-five times 2.5 positive minus m no is wrong it's plus m because it goes in this direction plus m equals zero so mc is going to be equal calculator please calculator please 15 15 plus 15 that multiplies i'm going to do it exactly is there 5 plus 2 minus 40 times 5 plus 25 times 2.5 equal negative 17.5 and then you're gonna come here I'm gonna say negative 17.5 keep per foot and you know something when you do that your problem is gonna be wrong because that's not the result what we calculated was everything in this side so I'm gonna say negative 17.5 plus MC equal zero so mc equal positive 17.5 keep fit you know this is a really 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 common error when you do this type of problems most of the students mess up and this is so easy to mess up one problem because you are solving it you are stressed out you are in the test and you read negative 17.5 and you put negative 17.5 without even realizing that this is in the same side of the equation and then you have to pass it to the other side Okay, that's it for C. This is becoming too long, so I'm gonna just uh, record the second part of this problem in the in the next video that I'm gonna just record right now. See you in the next video. Watch the next video, please. Thank you.